Hey guys, welcome back to the Raymore Repair Channel. Today we're taking a look at this Honda Harmony. This is an H1011. And overall, it's in pretty stinking good shape. Now, it is a manual transmission and not the hydrostat. I have taken the liberty of pulling the airbox off this thing, and I started it up, and this thing just smokes like the Dickens. Yep, it smokes bad. It's got like a 17-pack-a-day habit. You can kind of see the oil running out the exhaust right there. Well, I wonder why this happened, so I pulled the airbox off of it. And our first guess is right here. You can see all the junk that's down inside there. And uh, we also have a bunch of junk down inside the carburetor as well. See if we can actually get a decent shot there. This thing has been sucking in dirt. And I want to guess we're going to find the top end that is fairly worn out. This is the air filter out of it. Get out here in the sunlight so you can kind of see something in here. And you can see it's okay, but it's been sucking some dirt through. So we're going to pull the engine out of this thing, tear it down, and see exactly what needs to be replaced. Here we go. Now pulling the engine is kind of a pain in the butt on this thing, because I believe we're going to have to remove all the bodywork. The bodywork is all one piece. It's one big piece of Tupperware from the steering wheel on down and all the way around. So I'm going to see if we can do it without it, but it looks like we're going to end up needing to pull it to make this job as easy as possible. Pliers to help work it on out. Hmm. I got to massage those threads a bit. Here's one of the nuts that fell out or screw it fell out of there. It's been rumbling around in there for a little bit. Find the number two Phillips. what that screwed into but it's gone now get my number eight out again just slide some pliers on the back side of that this is a PTO engagement we're gonna engage the blade blade because there's only one of them Start that back in there so we know where it goes. Alrighty, that'll just pop up. We need to, we're going to take our battery out. Turn the parking brake off before we run out of a thing to do that with. Remove our pedals. They got bolts at the top just to take the pedal portion off and leave the stem. Start our nut back on there. So that's done. Those go to the key switch. I got another one over here. This is the one right here that has the nut on the bottom of it. It's a 10 millimeter nut instead of an 8 though. That and has a locking nut underneath it. 
Okay, that's done, that's done, that's done. Let's get her. I'm gonna guess that throttle probably takes a number two Phillips. It does. I want that nut off the backside of it. The camera battery just went dead. I'm not sure where we left off, but we're still pulling the plastic off the top of this thing and we're really making pretty good progress. We need to pull the battery out of it and we'll get that out. See if there's any bolts under it and uh, proceed along. My son and grandkids are gonna be here in a while and his wife. So we'll see how far we get before they get here and I need to play grandpa. Which really, for those who don't know, ain't a bad gig. All right, there's our battery out. Funny thing is, I just put that in. See if there's anything under here. Nope, didn't look like it. We should be getting fairly free. Take our gas lid off. Take all the stuff off of our plastic. Put our styrofoam back in there. There's nothing under it. Oh, surprise, surprise, we have more bolts. We've got a couple right down in here and one on the other side. Yay, we win! Okay, we're gonna pull the fuel tank off this thing. We'll pull the gas line and then pull the two screws that hold it on. It's all mounted to the motor, so we'll see what happens. There's one. There's two. And we have liberated the fuel tank. Okay, we'll take the uh, throttle loose. It takes a 10 millimeter. This is a testament to Honda's quality as compared to everybody else that uses a clamp and a screw and everything else. These things are pretty well done. A reusable zippy tie there. Already got one wire loose. There's the other one. One of those would be a kill wire and the other would be a charge wire. And then we got the starter wire on here. We'll get it off there. It's a 12. All right, I managed to pull the dipstick off. I got the oil draining and uh, pulling off the shroud. Kind of getting the engine down a little bit while it's still attached to the frame. It'll be easier to handle now than it will be later. So, see if we can get these with the number two, since I don't know where that number three went. We'll pop these off here. Pull our shroud off. Then we'll start these back in here. Like so. I think we'll go ahead and pop the flywheel off this thing. So we're gonna to to take these two pieces off here. And then uh, to clear the flywheel, then we'll pull the flywheel. Get that big hunk of metal off there before we have to hump the whole thing. Set, set that back there with the shroud. Start these back in here. The bolt seals on this are ones that kind of make their own threads. But you want to make sure you start them back in the same threads, so the hole's only going to make so many threads before there's no, before the hole's too big to do anything, so. All right, we got that off there. Now we got to pull the screen off. It is a number two Phillips as well. Pop that sweetheart off there. Take all this stuff off the top, start this back on here a little bit. There we go. Might have to move the coil back. I don't know if it'll clear the ring gear or not. I swear I saw that come up. Yeah, I did. Yep, gonna have to remove the coil. I have a 10T handle around here somewhere that'd make quick work of that. Here it is. Ah, there we go. 
Well, we got the engine out. Get you just a little bit closer here. And uh, let me give you a tour of this thing without the engine on it. Here it is. That's where the engine used to be. I did have to pull the pulleys off the bottom because they wouldn't fit through that little bitty hole the crankshaft goes through. So I had to drop those off first, but fortunately they weren't stuck on. Everything come off pretty good. So we pretty much just got a shell of this thing left after getting the engine out. But now we'll start working on the engine. That one's off. Start those back in so we'll know which ones go where. Still a little, aha! Bada bing, bada boom, there it is. Whoops, wrong way. There's our push rods. Whoa. Get those out of here. We made another mess. Oil mess on the floor. Holy cow, look at the oil just sitting in that cylinder. Grab the right socket and see if these will pop loose with this thing. Oh yeah. We're cooking. Here we go. The genuine Mac Long Reach. That's all of those. And I'm not concerned about cleaning this thing up because I'm cleaning up both the inside and outside. So I know she's as fuzzy as a mountain man. I've been outside for three years, but there she is. Ooh, look at that. We have twin counterbalancers in this sweetheart. Camshaft, crankshaft, two counterbalancers. And we also have, let's see here, these go on the counterbalancer shafts. One goes there. And one goes there. Like that. And inside of here we have a governor set up. Then we have balancer shaft, balancer shaft. This is an actual oil pump. This thing's actually force lubed. And uh, it goes down and it dries off the camshaft here. And actually has an oil pump. Alrighty, right here is our timing marks for the cam. There's one right here. And there's one right there. Doot to doot. These are much harder to see. There's one right. Let's see if we can get this thing to focus. There's one right here. There's one right there. That's tough to see in real life. Then we have another one right here. And we have one on that gear down there where there's a piece of junk. Clean that off a bit. Bring it back around and line it up. You can see there's a timing mark right there and right there. So we got timing mark, timing mark, timing mark, timing mark. And you can bet your bones I'm going to get my phone out and take a picture of this before I start removing shabs. Because it looks like a hot mess to try to figure out those real faint timing marks again. There we go. Alright, we're going to pull the camshaft out. No big deal there. Pull out the followers. I want to remember which one is top and bottom. Don't think it makes much difference, but just so people think I did. Which is the main thing. And then we got camshaft or time or counterbalancer one and counterbalancer two. And we're gonna lay those kind of like we found them as well. Although one has one timing mark and one has two, so it shouldn't be a big deal. I'm gonna take a second and I'm gonna dump the oil out of it. That's still in here in the pan. 
at least the majority of it. There, that's a little better. A little less rogue oil running around. And we'll take the bolts off the crankshaft, the rod, pop it out, and we're pretty much got this sweetheart torn down. Looks like they're 10 millimeter. You saw these bolts are smaller in the middle and larger here and here. Those are designed to stretch as you torque them. So you want to make sure you torque these right and do not over torque them. This particular kind of bolt. Now I'm going to grab that with a big pair of pliers and squeeze it and lightly pull it off. There's our crank end bearing, or rod cap, I guess I should say. It's dull, but it doesn't look too bad. Let's pop the piston out. the top of the stroke there. Let's pull the crank out. That looks pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. Now the other thing this engine has that many of them don't is it has a big ball bearing on the top and bottom of the crankshaft on the flywheel end and the power takeoff end both. So I kind of like that. Of course I kind of like these engines so There we are. Yeah, got scratches all over them. Let's pull a ring and see what it looks like. Terrible. Top oil control ring. bottom oil control and then the expander so got crud built up on it we'll have to do some measuring on it and see exactly where we're at with this but that's the teardown of this engine I'm probably gonna make this a two-part video one is gonna be tearing it down the other is gonna be putting it back together and getting this thing back together and running we did all in one it's going to be an incredibly long video so we'll kind of split it up a little bit well guys that's kind of where we're going to leave it off for now we got this thing torn down uh, i'll get it specked out and then we'll get ready to get ready to go back together i'll bring you guys along and we'll reassemble this engine get it back on the mayor frame and get it running thanks for watching stay tuned for the second part uh, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss it appreciate it god bless